Hi there, everyone. Welcome to our review of American Horror Stories Season 3, Episode 3, Tapeworm. How's everybody doing? How, how, how are we feeling? We just got done watching this episode mere minutes ago. I'm still in recovery. I don't, I, I'm just putting on a smile so that I don't have to think about the pain. Listen, this was the episode that I was the most scared about going into because the idea of tapeworms or seeing them in shows and movies like 911, that first season had a tapeworm episode. And when I got to that episode, I think it was number four. Uh, that was the end of the show for me. And it was a really good, like, that first season, like, leading up to that was great. And they did such a creep show job with yeah. that episode that when I saw the name of this episode, I was like, oh no, oh, oh, oh no, here we go again. I'm going to yeah. end up in another tapeworm episode. But I would say overall, until we, you know, got to the end where it all went sideways, this was just a really sad episode, more than scary or horror or terrifying. This just made me feel really sad for most of it. It is a really sad episode. It is a very gross episode. I will... <laughs> I will say I was a little bit more horrified than I thought I was going to be because I do not have the same television tapeworm aversion that you do. I, you know, I didn't see that episode of 911, so I was going into this. <laughs> it was so yeah. gross. I, I heard enough from you that I was like, nope, not doing it. I'm good. Like, I don't have a natural tapeworm fear. But... 911 just did a really good job with making it feel like this. this is very real, where this one, it's like, you know, it's sort of a campy monster you know kind of deal it's really okay this is sort of it's like a monster movie a lot of the time where you hear about the monster you hear how these different stories about oh the monster is nasty and has giant teeth and then when you actually see the monster maybe it's not as scary as you thought the build-up the moment that doctor was like oh you gotta take this and this is where the worm is gonna come out and you if you eat normally, it's about a foot long. At that point, I was just like, no, oh, no, no, I don't want to see it. I don't want to. Yeah, sure. It wasn't as scary when I actually saw it, but the buildup, I would, I had a pit in my stomach. Oh, it was, this episode was something else. I'm not saying it was great. I'm not saying it was, <laughs> it was you know, the best or not the best, but it was definitely, they took some swings with this and some of them hit and some of them didn't like i said i mostly felt sad watching this episode which is not what i want to watch when i'm watching horror this is number three on my list of episodes so far this season yeah it's number three on mine yeah. too i we've had worse episodes of this franchise oh way worse yeah. this is not like you know the bottom of the barrel here it's just you know it's okay with that being said, I have no desire to ever see Tapeworm again, and I'm going to try to forget about it by tomorrow. But you know what? Go ahead and hit that subscribe button, because we don't want you guys to forget about us. We've already <laughs> talked here extensively about Bestie. Mm -hmm. We had a very fun discussion on Daphne and yeah. that weird, crazy tour. And we don't want you guys to miss what we got to say about Oregon, episode four, the finale of this Halloween event. Yeah, it's been really fun talking about this show so far. All right. Uh, <laughs> Here's sort of the premise for anyone who's like, I just want to kind of know what this episode is yeah. about. So we have this, you know, aspiring model, Vivian, who ends up going out to audition for Lisa Renna. <laughs> I mean, it was really cool seeing her in this. Yeah. I used to watch her on Days of Our Lives, like way back in the day. She's still great. She was great then. She's great now. Um, and she's told that she's she's not small enough for what she wants. So she goes to see this doctor. Her roommate is like, hey, listen, you know, this doctor really helped me. You go see this doctor. So this doctor gives her this one drug and it's working. But because she has, I think it's like a heart murmur or something like that, that yeah. she didn't tell him about. He's like, oh, no, 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 no. I have to take you off. This is not safe. She's yeah. like, oh, man, is there any other alternatives? okay, there's this one alternative and he opens this little box and there's a little tiny tapeworm in it. And I was just like, oh my goodness. Like, I know that this is sort of an extreme example of like beauty and wanting to be thinner, but 
this was a thing that actually was happening for a while, like a long while. It's not really legal anymore. Mm -hmm. I don't think that people do it anymore. I don't really know. Um, but it was a thing and it was a thing that was like, as it was going on, it affects your organs. It can affect your brain. So that's what I thought was happening during this whole thing. I didn't think it was like, oh, the monster within is now affecting you as the person is where they went with it. But I was like, oh, is this actually what's happening? Because I know from a little bit of Google research <laughs> that taking a tapeworm that the larvae can go into your organs, it can go into your muscles, it can go into your brain, and it can change things. Okay, you know what? I like your idea better. So this is this is what we're going to do. The monster within. <laughs> we're just going to, maybe this is retroactively, maybe this is fan fiction. We're just going to say that Heather's commentary on what's going on with Vivian was just a metaphor, and this is actually what is happening here. It is the monster within. I will admit, I have no knowledge of this subject matter. I am not an expert on tapeworms or Me any neither. worms <laughs> at all. I did not even Google research. I did I did nothing. I just watched this episode, got freaked out, and came on the video. And my whole takeaway was like, what kind of doctor has like a worm in a box that he's just keeping around the doctor's office? Is this like a in case of emergency worm? Yeah, it was it was odd. But I mean, the whole episode had a bit of that odd thing too, because we all saw the trailer going in. Yeah. We knew that this was coming up, that there was going to be a doctor that was going to give this. So I mean, we all knew it was coming. I'll be honest. This is a really hard episode for me to talk about just because I'm so uncomfortable about the storyline, yeah. the messages that it sends. It's, yes. It is all stuff that is real. It is all stuff that is happening out there in the world. Maybe not on the level that they're showing it on the show, but it's clearly happening. And there's a, clearly a metaphor here, too, where if you do get more famous, you do think you have more control of what's going on. You can be more demanding. You can be mean. You can do everything that Vivian was doing minus you know, some of the binge eating or some of like the dramatic changes of personality and all that. But I mean, all the rest is there. All the rest is real. It actually happens. Yes, it's absolutely happening. And there is a uh, heavy demand, of course, for people who are in the modeling industry, acting, musicians, artists, uh, just in general. And, you know, it's pushed on everybody all the time, you know, sort yeah. of thin is in all that sort of thing. I think there was a a saying that a really famous supermodel, I don't know who it is, so don't quote me on that, that mm -hmm. always used to say something like, you know, uh, nothing tastes as good as skinny feels, which has always been like the one of the weirdest things yeah. I had ever heard. I was just like, what are you talking about? Donuts are so much better than being skinny. <laughs> I <love donuts. laughs> like, I just, I, I don't have that. I'm not in that mentality. But a lot of people are. And, yeah. and part of it is that it's being pushed a lot. And if you're in that industry, I mean, I'm not in that industry, obviously, but like, yeah. you know, I can't imagine what the pressures are. So when we see Vivian actually be like, you know what? I want to keep this train rolling. Like things are starting to go really well for me. Uh, I'm, I'm sort of on that cusp and now I'm going to lose the drug that I'm using. I was like, <laughs> Yeah, I believe it. I believe it. There's a lot of pressure. I know this will be a surprise, but I'm not a male model. I have not worked for Vogue magazine. I have not worked for even that other magazine that Vivian like demeaned in this episode. And she was just like, how dare you, Heather, work for this terrible publication? No, it's this is the real thing with it is that aside from the <laughs> subject matter being kind of difficult and the story, like you said, being sad. Yeah. I just wish there was more depth to this episode. It felt very surface. And I think that's probably intentional on some level. But, you know, like Lisa Rim Renna's performance was campy and it was everything you sort of thought. It felt it perfect for this episode. Yeah, it just the, the writing made it feel like, OK, she's just doing Meryl Streep from The Devil Wears Prada, which is probably what they were going for. I know it's a slightly different character, but it just the entire episode felt very OK. We're just. Not going to get into anything else about Vivian at all, other than that she is a model who wants to be thin. She takes a tapeworm. This happens. She has problems. You know, things go awry at the end. The tapeworm kills her. And it's just sort of, okay, great. It's it's all there. There's just no layers to this. There's no B story. There's no, like, 
emotional investment in anything. It's just kind of there. Yeah, that was my problem with it, too, is that there wasn't enough time to get to know Vivian. Like, she she let little things, you know, this is where I'm from. This is some of, yeah. a little bit of the medical struggles that she had. But this was a shorter episode than some of the other ones. Like, Bestie was, like, 55 minutes or something like yeah. that. And it took its time. Like, it was... It was a good long time to really get to know Shelby and what was going on with her and her bestie. So by the time we got to that climax of that, it was like, yeah, I believe what's going on. Where here it's, we didn't, and I was really invested in Shelby. And yeah. here I was like, yeah, I'm invested in Vivian, but I don't really know her that well. And I'm not really sure what I'm invested in. Am I invested in her Getting to be a model, like, because that's really the only main thing that I know about her. I think the other thing was just that, aside from the sheer absurdity of the tape form and that ridiculous final 10 minutes of this episode, which, you know, once again, still trying to burn out of my memory, this whole thing reminded me a lot of Red Tide, the first half of Double Feature, where mm -hmm. everybody's taking, you know, the magical pill that will allow you to be able to be super productive and have all the, but there's a heavy cost to it and it starts to slowly decline on. And it's just, it's the same sort of idea throughout this episode where it's like, you want to make your dreams come true. Here you go, but here's the cost of it. And mm -hmm. so it's just, it's a very familiar theme for the show. And I look at the other two episodes and sure they don't have like some weirdo giant worm being like ah, ah, like near the end of it but they had they felt more original still at the same time that's where i think like i i understand what they were doing and sometimes it is really fun to have these sort of campy monster yeah. type things like it's part of the horror genre so it's it's we haven't seen organ yet as the recording of this so yeah. this might just be the one monster type you know movie or yeah. episode that we're getting or whatever but for me, like I said, with 911, it was like real and really happening. You know yeah. what I mean? Like it felt like this was like legit. There was no like, you know, giant tapeworm that had a mouth that was going to open and attack you in your face. Like that's not, that's not a thing. But for here, for it being sort of a monster thing, I think the ending was like a really cool idea where it was like, okay, you've got these two women that are both in the same industry. It's like, oh, you know, if one of us makes us, we'll pull the other one up, which is, you know, nice in theory, but that's not how it works, right? Yeah. Like it, it still has to be the industry still wants the other person that you're pulling up. And then, you know, to see them, you know, continue on the way that they are to the end where we've lost Vivian and then Heather comes home and she's just like, Hey, like what's going on? You see that day worm coming down out of the ceiling. I just <laughs> laughed. I was just like, this is so ridiculous, but I'm still in it for whatever reason. And then to have her show up and she's all done up and it's like, are you hungry? Yeah, I'm hungry kind of thing. It's just like, okay. You know, it's funny. We, we, we've had our differences, you and I, on this season so far with certain things we liked or didn't like. We're both exactly on the same page here. Like, I thought this ending was really, it was dumb, but also very entertaining. And it helped to sort of get me out of just like the rut of watching the rest of this. Here is my ridiculous, yeah. really nerdy metaphor that I'm going to create here. This felt very much like Venom from Spider-Man, where it's just like Peter Parker's got the symbiote, and then at the end, the symbiote goes over here, and now Heather has it. Now Heather is going to be the new Venom, and then after that, somebody there's going to be like a model version of Carnage, and this is just, it's, it's so ridiculous, but it's so true, where all of these people want something, and they don't understand the ramifications that are going to come from it, and I think every single person would be impacted differently on mm -hmm. some level by the quote-unquote symbiote that is the worm. I mean, the, even the final <laughs> line from this, where Heather is just like, I'm starving. It is so dumb, but I loved it. I was just <laughs> like, yes, yes, you say that. You guys give me what I want after being depressed for 35 minutes leading into this. What I, what I, the only thing that I was kind of like, I would have liked it to see that it was the worm that gave Vivian her confidence. And the mm -hmm. only reason why is because 
you know, they had already seen Heather and was like, Heather's not it. And she was already very thin. So her taking the tapeworm, it's not about getting thinner at that point. She was already what they were looking for in that industry. And she already looked like what she looked like. But for some reason, the worm had given her this confidence. So it almost feels like it would have made more sense and threaded the whole story if it was like, okay, Vivian doesn't have that same confidence, but then she takes the worm and she gets a lot of confidence on top of, you know, losing the weight where it was just like with Heather, Heather had some confidence. She was like, ah, man, like, you know, this magazine's taking my pictures. I feel really good about it. Like she had confidence. She was already the weight, but they still didn't want her. They're just like, ah, she doesn't have that it factor. Okay, now she's taking the tapeworm and now all of a sudden she has the it factor where for when it happened to Vivian, she became like, you know, a different person where she was really like, you know, on edge and not feeling great and lashing out at people. So it's kind of like, okay, well, why, why isn't that happening over here? Like, does the worm just decide <laughs> what it wants to do with people? Well, here's the thing. Now, next season, we have to have Tapeworm 2 no, please, back no. and wormier no, than no. ever. Where this time they have to figure out back how to kill wormier. the Tapeworm once and for all. Listen, yeah, Jester, don't do this, guys. I, 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 I watched it once. I don't have to watch it again. What a, a weird thing. We're gonna here's here's how weird this episode is. We're gonna go now and watch Oregon as a palate cleanser <laughs> for tapeworm. And who knows? It may be even weirder. It very well might be weirder. I would say, like, overall, this is my least favorite of the three, but so far there's been for me. No real stinkers this season yet. Hopefully yeah. Oregon is going to be fine. There's nothing like Drive, which was <laughs> such a stinker. I mean, every season is usually kind of, you know, it hits really good or not yeah. so much. But I mean, as much as the beginning and the middle of this episode was just like, oh, man, I just feel bad. <laughs> like, yeah. I don't feel that good. This is really sad. Those last 10 minutes of how weird and strange and monster movie it got, it made up for all of it. <laughs> I'm going to remember this episode, even if I don't want to, I'm going to remember <laughs> it. I don't know if that's good. I don't know if that's bad. I, 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 I need some time to simmer on this, guys, but it's, we will be talking about tapeworm, I feel like, in some shape or form for many months, if not years to come. Yeah, I feel like, yes, it is definitely an episode that sticks with you like bro house. Okay, well, we're going to worm <laughs> our way right out of this discussion now, but be sure to hit that subscribe button for more of American Horror Stories Season 3. Thank you so much to our patrons for your support. We appreciate that so, so much. We'll see you guys next time.